Hi, I would like to introduce you to Kim. Kim is your colleague, whether you've realized it yet or not. She doesn't have a gender, but I'm gonna call her a, a she. Now, if you haven't already started working with Kim, then you probably should, because Kim is super smart, super helpful, and super fast. It feels kind of like she knows everything there is to know about anything. Kim also never gets tired. She's, she's never in a bad mood and she can multitask pretty much infinitely. However, she's a bit of an oddball and you need to learn how to work with her. She sometimes hallucinates, makes mistakes or, or even lies, but not quite as often anymore, but she used to at least. Oh, and uh, she doesn't actually have a body. So she's kind of everywhere all at once and also kind of nowhere. So she can't make toast for you. She can't you know, take your best customer out to lunch and she can't pick up your kids. So who is this Kim? Well, as you probably figured out by now, uh, Kim is not actually a person. <laughs> she is uh, just a name that I made up to represent AI, um, AI in general. So you can use whatever name you want, but whether you're using GPT or Bing or Copilot or any of the other ways of interacting with, with uh, large language models, um, for the purpose of this video, I'm, I'm just gonna say that you're, you're working with Kim. This is gonna be a three part video because it, it got a bit long, so I needed to chop it up. And in this first part, I'm gonna make a, a case for why you probably should start working with Kim and also address some of the hype and, and fear surrounding this whole thing. And then in the second part, I'm gonna get more practical, uh, show how it looks like, it feels like uh, working with Kim and you know, also share some practical tips and tricks. And then in, in part three, uh, I'm gonna talk about her some of her quirks and weaknesses and, and how to kind of work around that. With all the AI hype lately, people tend to fall into two camps. Either they're like, no, an AI can't do my job. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an expert, I've been doing this for decades, and this is special human type work and a, a dumb program can't, can't do this for me. On the other end of the scale, there's the, oh no, she can do my job. I'm gonna be unemployed, I'm gonna be irrelevant. We're all, we're all gonna be unemployed. And yeah, let's, let's talk a bit about this. So can she do your job? And if so, will she steal it? Let's, let's actually look at some research. All right, here's a paper from uh, Goldman Sachs called The Potentially Large Effects of Artificial Intelligence on Economic Growth. Um, link in the, in, the, uh, in the video description. The, the key message here is that Kim will impact almost any kind of job that involves thinking, reading, or communicating. So it is a pretty big deal. Um, in fact, they estimate that about 300 million jobs around the world will be exposed to automation. And we'll talk more about what that means. Because, yeah, she has no physical body, right? So she can kind of be everywhere all at once. This graph shows um, roughly how much percent of the work Kim can do per profession. So the average is about 25% of all tasks. But if we, um, I should turn this. Uh, if we <laughs> zoom in and look at it, office and administrative support, legal work, she can do about half of the work. And um, management and software development down here, about 30%. These are just approximations, of course, but they are uh, educated guesses backed by research. And no matter how you look at it, these are surprisingly high numbers. So yeah, Kim is Kim is pretty capable. Let's look at some more. Um, this is a report um, called GPT-4 Technical Report from OpenAI. And there they benchmarked Kim's abilities ag against a bunch of you know exams designed for, for humans. And uh, um, they covered quite a wide range of areas. We see things like you know art, history, biology, chemistry, economics, English, psychology. It's just very very wide range of stuff. And GPT three point five did you know pretty okay on these things, but GPT four, you know, Kim pretty much knocked it out of the park. Here, it's amazing results, and in many cases, you know, way surpassing average human capability. So yeah, Kim is a Kim is a bit of a know it all. <laughs> but without the arrogant, annoying personality that, that, that sometimes comes with it. So, you know, pretty nice to have a person like this as, as a colleague, wouldn't you say? And all this is just the current state. The tech is progressing insanely fast, so Kim is just getting warmed up. So yeah, there's a lot of buzz around this right now, but I, I think it's fair to say that this is, this is a revolution happening. So can Kim do your job? Most likely, yes, at least a proportion of it. And that proportion is growing very fast. So question number two then, will she steal your job? In the long term, of course, you know, who knows, right? <laughs> but in the short term, probably not. Not for most people, at least. This graph from the Goldman Sachs paper shows how many people will be affected within different professions. 
So the dark blue here means pretty much no effect. This is like mostly physical jobs, like building maintenance, um, construction work, etc. Uh, light gray means likely replacement. So here there will, there will likely be some job loss um, in some areas. But in most professions, and you know, most of this is light blue, and light blue means AI complement, as in Kim you know, won't steal your job. Instead, she'll just make you more productive. She'll make you more, more effective. And those who do lose their jobs, which of course sucks, um, will likely find new jobs. That, that is the historical pattern. For example, when, when the Industrial Revolution came along, a lot of jobs disappeared, but a lot of new types of jobs were, were created. There is one important difference though, the speed. For example, the printing press and the steam engine took decades to become, become widespread because we're talking you know, physical things that have to be moved around and, and, and manufactured. But the AI revolution is, is digital. So any new development, any new technology just kind of spreads instantly uh, around the whole world. So the earlier you get familiar with this, the more likely you're going to benefit from it rather than being overrun by it. Let's go back to the two camps I mentioned. I'm going to propose a middle ground here. Instead of, no, she can't do my job, or she can do my job, help, I'm going to lose my job. I propose a middle ground here, which is, wow, she's going to make me insanely productive. Let's take a silly metaphor. Um, an experienced lumberjack faced with a new tool called a chainsaw. Which mindset do you think will serve her best? This one, you know, ignore it. I'm going to stick with my trusty axe. I have years of, years of experience and that stupid fancy new tool, you know, can't do my job. Or adopt. I'm going to learn this new tool uh, and get so much more productive. Or, you know, panic. Help, that tool is going to steal my job, right? Outlaw it. Mindset tends to be self-fulfilling. So <laughs> I, I really recommend this, this adopt mindset. In other words... Become friends with Kim, invite her in, learn to work with her. And to misuse this metaphor a little more, um, <laughs> when, when the lumberjack is using this new tool, the chainsaw, she also needs to change the way she works, right? If she starts banging the tree with the chainsaw as if it was an ax, it's not gonna work very effectively. So it's, it's, it's kind of the same with, with working with Kim. She takes a bit of getting used to it. You might need to change some you know, well-established habits. Think of her as this, super smart trainee that just joined your company and she doesn't know exactly what you want her to do so you need to help her understand and she has a bit of an odd personality so you kind of need to learn to work with her and experiment a bit you know to find out how to how to unleash her her, her, her powers the reward is of course she'll make you more productive my personal experience when starting to use kim for things like programming well i was a bit skeptical when i started but but after getting used to it I was kind of blown away. It felt like she gave me superpowers. She made me a better programmer. I got stuff done faster. I could do stuff within minutes that would maybe take me, take me hours. And I also learned a lot. I'll, I'll give some examples of that in, in part two. A pretty common saying nowadays is AI won't steal your job, but people using AI will. And uh, I think there is some truth to that. Um, it, it looks pretty clear to me that that people and organizations that adopt this technology and make it part of their day-to-day -day work will greatly outperform those who don't. So your best bet, both for your own job security, but also for the success of your organization is to learn this stuff, get used to working with Kim. So how do you work effectively with a bodiless, schizophrenic, split personality, all-knowing genius with a short memory span and an occasional tendency to hallucinate? You know, this is quite different from the people you normally work with, I, I suppose, unless you have some very interesting colleagues. So uh, yeah, that's what part two is all about. So stay tuned. Oh, <laughs> looks like Kim doesn't actually agree with my description of her. Yes, I lack physical form. Schizophrenic. No, AI doesn't experience mental illness. Wait, I, I thought you were her. You want me to have another voice? No, no, wait, wait. <laughs> Stop. Let let's just let's just stick to text, all right? Okay, sure, whatever. 